Hello, yesterday's video showed how to SVG a snail. Today's video is also going to be about SVG, but about something that I enjoy a lot better, and that's generating SVG geometric shapes with logic and code. So first of all, I need to um, switch to a preprocessor here. And um, I have some basic styles for polygons, and I'm not going to touch the styling for quite a while. So now I need to set some dimensions for the SVG. They can be different, but I'm just going to set them to the same value, which is going to be uh, this D, which let's say it's 500. And um, I want to have the zero, 00 point of my SVG canvas dead in the middle. So this means I need to compute the coordinates of the top left corner. So in this case, they're going to be minus half this uh, dimension D, so minus 0.5. Now I'm going to have the SVG element, and this is going to have a view box attribute. And this is going to get generated from an array which contains the coordinate of the top left uh, corner. And um, it also contains the dimensions of my SVG. And this is joined by space. Next, I'm going to have a mixin. And this is going to be a regular polygon mixin because these are the simplest polygons that can uh, be generated logically with code. And this is going to depend on a few things. First of all, it's going to depend on the number of vertex points of my polygon. And then it's also going to depend on the radius of the circle on which all these vertex points are situated. Now, not every polygon can have all its, ver or all its vertices situated on the same circle, but all regular polygons have all their vertices on the same circle, which is called a circumcircle, by the way. Okay, so I need to set some uh, default values for these. So uh, P by default is going to be 3, uh, 3, sorry, um, and R by default is going to be, I don't know, let's say 80, I don't know, it can be anything, doesn't really matter. And then I'm going to have the base angle between two consecutive vertex points, and this is going to be 2 times pi over the number of vertex points. So 2 times pi is 360 is the full circle. Next, I'm going to have uh, an array where I store the vertex coordinates. And this is going to be empty at first. Then I need to loop for uh, all the vertices. And my loop counter is going to be i. And this is going to go all the way up to p. And I increase it every time. Then I need to compute the current angle that each uh, vertex is situated at. So the current angle of the current vertex point is going to be the index of the loop times the base angle. Then I need to compute the x-coordinate of uh, the current vertex point. And this is going to be r times cosine of the current angle. Then I need to compute the y-coordinate. And here it's obviously going to be y. And this is going to be times the sinus. And then I need to put these vertex coordinates into the array of vertex coordinates. So push x, y. Now, after this loop, I need to create a polygon element. And this is going to have a points array. And this is going to get generated from the array of vertex coordinates, which gets joined by a space. Okay, now, next step is call this, uh, this some mixing. So I now have a triangle, and if I change the number of uh, vertices to 4, this is going to be a square and a regular pentagon. Okay, but maybe I don't want it to always point towards the right. So that's the first vertex. Let's say I wanted to offset it. So I'm going to have an offset angle, and this offset angle let's say that by default I want my polygons to all point up. So then by default this value is going to be um, minus pi over 2, which is minus 0.5 times pi. And I need to add this offset here. So now all my polygons point up, no matter what shape they are. Okay, but maybe I want them to get moved, not to be right in the middle, not to be around the zero, 00 point of the SVG canvas. Then I can set some offsets for the central point. So XO and YO. And I add them up here. So I add them 
and I need to have some defaults for those as well. And the default is going to be zero in this case. So let's say I have a polygon with five vertex points, a radius of 75 and an offset angle of zero and it's at 150 and uh, 250. Uh, 250, maybe it was too much, 200, 170, okay, 70, okay, this is good, so now I can have something different, and uh, let's say it's going to have seven uh, vertex points, it's going to have, um, this radius is going to be 80, and it's going to be at minus 150, and uh, minus 70, something like this. Okay, so um, all good so far. Let's see how our generated code looks like. So there's something that I really don't like and that's having all those decimals. So we're going to set a custom precision based on uh, the value of the radius. So this is going to be our precision. And to see how this works, let's say that we have a radius that's 10. And we're going to take the logarithm base 10 of 10 this is the radius this is going to be 1 now if our radius is 100 this is going to be 2 if our radius is 1000 it's going to be 3 if our radius is uh, 1 it's going to be 0 if our radius is 0 0.1 minus 1 0 0.01 minus 2 so this doesn't necessarily have to be uh, a power of 10 so it can be 20 so in this case we're just going to take the floor so we can get a linear uh, value based on the order of magnitude of the radius. So if we subtract this value from four, uh, from uh, four, yeah, four is a good value. Uh, four minus. So we're going to take the floor of this logarithm of the radius, and just in case this happens to be uh, smaller than zero we're going to limit it to zero. Okay, so this is going to be our precision and we set here to fixed. However, this is still not enough because here, if we look, we just have 0.3 times zero, which is not what we want. So let's convert to numbers. And now if we look at the compiled result, we only have decimals where we really need them. So, okay, this is uh, good. Now, we have here regular polygons, but these are all convex. And we can also have convex star polygons, like you have that pentagram there. So let's see how these are created. So for a convex pentagon, I connect this uh, vertex to the next point at uh, that base angle on the circle. But for a pentagram, I skip the first one and I connect it to the second one. And here again, I skip the first one here and I connect it to the second one. And if I have more vertex points, I can uh, skip not just one, but I can skip two and connect to the third. So um, I'm going to have another value here, Q. And this is the number of the uh, vertex I connect to, the first, the second, the third. And by default, it's going to be one because that's uh, the value for convex which is the most common one. And here I also need to multiply with this Q. So if I change this Q here to something like two, I'm going to have uh, this. And here I, can, uh, I have uh, seven vertices, so I, cha I can change it to something like three and I get a different, because you can see if I change this to seven as well, that's uh, going to be uh, a different one. Okay, now something else that I can do is compute the length of one edge. And the way I compute the length of one edge is uh, from uh, the circumradius. So my radius is going to be twice the radius times the sine of half the base angle. Um, 0.5, sorry, times. Okay. And I can set this here in a style. 
as a custom property and I interpolate it. Okay, uh, something is wrong. Oh! I don't know how that happened. It should have been inside the um, polygon. Sorry. That was weird. Okay, so now that I have this, I can set a number of um, stro um, or dashes per um, edge. And the way I do this, um, but note that this will only work in WebKit browsers. So stroke dash array, calc, and this is because uh, calc doesn't work as a value for stroke dash array in Firefox or Edge. So this is going to be, let's say we want to have um, five strokes per edge. So we're going to do 0.2 uh, times the edge length. So now we have five strokes per edge. So if we want to have, I don't know, uh, 10 strokes per edge, we're going to have like this. So uh, even more, like 20, they're going to be like this. So yeah, this is it. This is what I wanted to show you today. And I hope you've enjoyed these videos. Uh, if you have any other ideas for other future videos, just drop them in the comments below or send them on Twitter. And until next time.